So we started down the path of utilizing cell references, cell locations like B5, B6, B7, and so on, to build some basic formulas using our arithmetic operators like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and so on. Now, we discussed cell referencing. And once again, that brought us into formulas. Now, really, inside of Excel, there's two different ways to reference cells. We've used one of them. We haven't talked about it explicitly yet, but we've used one of them because it's default. This is called a relative reference. The second one is called an absolute reference. And I want to describe both of them here because there's pros and cons to both of them. Take a look. First, we'll look at relative references within our formulas. So I've completed my different month uh, totals here. 1700 for January, 1790 for February, and 1630 for March. Now I want to do the same thing for my different bills. How much total do I spend in rent versus phone and credit card and so on? Well, thinking about your data here, we have a very consistent layout. For each of these bills, there's three months worth of data, right? Three months for rent, three months for phone, credit cards, and so on. So creating a formula there for each of these bills are gonna look very similar. The only difference is if you're thinking about referencing cells, let's jump into cell E5. This is gonna be in my total for rent. What row am I inside of right now? Row five, right? There's row five for rent. Well, when I add up the rent values there, I'm gonna add up columns B, C, and D for row five. So it'll be B5 plus C5 plus D5, right? What if I go down to phone? I wanna do the same thing, right? I wanna add up the values for phone, but what row am I in now? I'm in row six. So when I add this up, it's now gonna be B6 and C6 and D6, not five, because I'm now down a row. Take a look, let's try this out. Let's put this into practical use. So I'm gonna build my formula. We'll say equals. Now I wanna say, uh, let's see, B5 plus C5. Yeah, is that right? Plus D5. Great. Now think about the formula once again. This is called a relative reference. The way that we're referencing these cells, B5, C5, and D5, it's relative, which means from this location, where my formula is currently at, all we did was go three cells to the left and add them up, just relative to that location. Go three cells to the left, add those up. I'll hit my enter key, $3,600 for the past three months. Now I wanna do the same thing for phone. Well, because we're using relative referencing, my formula, the new formula, is now in a new cell, but it's still the three cells to the left. So let me go back up here to the 3600. I'm gonna copy that formula. So I'm just gonna go up to my home tab. I'm gonna hit copy, which is the, the little two pieces of paper there. I'll give that a click. Or control C, C for copy on your keyboard. You can see I've now copied cell E5. I'm gonna go down below, right down below to E6, and I'm gonna paste this in. I'm gonna hit the little paste button up here, this big clipboard with the paper. And I pasted it in, I got my 150. 50 plus 50 plus 50 is 150. Let's double click that formula, and look at that. Same formulas above, B, C, and D, but what row? Six. Relative reference, I'm in a new location, but it's still going three cells to the left and adding them up. Let's try this one more time. Hit my enter key. I'm gonna copy this cell, uh, E6, I'll control C just to copy. I'm gonna highlight all these cells down below, just click and drag E7 to E10, and I'm gonna paste this in. Control V, like Victor, for paste. And look at that, I'm done. Simple, created one formula using relative referencing, just saying, hey, go three cells to the left, grab them, add them up. Now I'm copy, paste, it's always three cells to the left, three cells to the left. Consistent layout using relative referencing to really automate my experience in creating my formulas. Very, very cool. Time-saving technique here. 
Now, remember, relative referencing is just one way to reference cells. There is a flip side to this, and it's called absolute referencing. Think about this. What if you had a calculation that you wanted to use over and over again? You wanted to copy and paste it to multiple locations, but within that formula, there might be a set of cells or a single cell that has to remain the same. This cell always needs to be used. Take a look. I'm going to build an additional column here. We'll do a percent. I'm going to hit my Enter key. So now I want to know what percentage each bill, their totals, like rent, we spent $3,600. What's the percentage of the total spend versus the total for phone? What was the total spend or the percentage of spend there? Well, for my formula, I'm instead of F5, I start my formula with in equals. And I'm going to say E5, which is my 3600 there for rent total. And I'm going to divide that using my forward slash. I'm going to divide that by the grand total, which is inside of cell E10. There's E10. Nice color coding. I can see it. So E5 divide with E10. I'll hit my Enter key. And roughly 70%, ouch, 70%, man. 70% of my bills for the past three months went to rent. Now remember, this is using what type of reference right now? If I double click that cell, this is a relative reference. So from that location, we want one cell over, 3600 E5, and then down how many cells? We went one, two, three, four, five cells down, and we divided from that location, from cell F5. Now, what does this mean if I copy this? Because I want to do it for the rest of my bills here, right? You know, I select that 70%. I control C to copy it. I jump down here and grab all these cells and I paste it in. Control V. Oh. What's happening? I'm getting a very common error inside of Excel documents. This is called the divide by zero error. Pound div forward slash zero, divide by zero. Can't do it, mathematically you cannot divide by zero. So why am I getting that error? Well, let's look at one of the formulas that I just copied and pasted. I'm gonna double click the first error. All right, equals, great. E6, that's the total for phone, right? Check, check, that looks good. Divide, check again. E11, wait a minute. One cell over, there's E6. And then how many cells down? One, two, three, four, five. Remember the first formula, the one that we copied and pasted, told it to go five cells down relative to its position. So it is, it's going five cells down. But I don't want it to go five cells down. What's the next one doing? Over one, E7, one, two, three, four, five. It's going too far, right? relative to its location. So here comes an absolute reference. I'm going to delete these. I'll just highlight these and hit my delete key on my keyboard. I'm going to go back to the first formula. I'm going to double click it because I want to make an edit to it. Now this formula says go one cell over, grab that value from its location, right? F5, and then go one, two, three, four, five cells down and divide. Now I want to copy this for the rest of the, the bills. Of those two cell references, E5 and E10, which one needs to be consistent? If I'm going to copy and paste this, I always need this cell. Yeah, E10. So the way that you make a cell reference absolute is with dollar signs. I'm going to do dollar sign E, dollar sign 10. I've now made cell E10 absolute. Column E, row 10 is now absolute. I'll hit my enter key and I'm just going to copy and paste again. Control C, I'll grab all this, Control V, paste it in, and I've got my formulas. Each of these now, if I give them a double click, utilize E10, E10, E10. It's absolute. The alternative to this is to create the formula, get the errors, and then have to go each individual one and update them. 
or create them from scratch. But what a hassle. By utilizing absolute and relative referencing, we can create very dynamic formulas. Automate your experience. So once again, try this out. Finish off your totals that you did earlier. If you haven't done them already, complete them here. Create the percentage column. Mess around with this idea of relative and absolute referencing. And remember the dollar signs. Dollar sign E, dollar sign 10. You've made cell E10 absolute. Try it out.